There's been a lot of talk around hazard reduction burning in Australia. To what extent could we have done things differently? Is there an aspect of uh, greens, greenies, as they're being described as well, holding up hazard reduction burns, perhaps management of property as well? Well, joining me now, yes, there are some people semi in charge, a greens minister. ACT Greens leader and the Minister for Climate Change, Shane Rattenbury, here in the studio. Thanks for your time, of course. So, um, for people not aware in the capital, Greens and Labor in a, a power-sharing arrangement and have been for some time, since 2012. So, you were in charge of hazard reduction for several years. What happened? Did it go up? Did it go down? Did it fluctuate? No, certainly, Tom, I was responsible for the agency that did the land management here in the Territory and we continue with a program of uh, hazard reduction burning, as well as other techniques. You know, I think a lot of this debate, people have been saying you've got to burn. Mm. Burning's not always the answer. It can also be things like physical removal, uh, grazing, mowing, all of these sort of things contribute to it. You know, for me, this debate we've seen publicly is very frustrating. You know, Green's policy is very clear that we support hazard reduction burning, particularly making sure that it's informed by scientists and fireys. That's what we do here in the ACT. We've got a long-term plan and we just implement it. And as Minister, I rolled that plan out. So it's guided by the Strategic Bushfire Management Plan. That's right. How does that formulate? Who has input and then you come up with the final um, areas? Here's where we'll burn and here's why we do it. Who has input into that? Yeah, that Strategic Bushfire Plan is set over five years. It's put together with firefighters, uh, land managers, uh, land farmers, lessees, uh, traditional custodians give us input as well, yeah. as well as conservationists. And we basically build a consensus around that. And what, we, what it helps us do is make sure we are keeping our city as safe as possible, but also making sure we're conscious of sensitive environmental areas, that we protect the values of the national parks, as well as keeping our city safe. So when you say those different groups, so you've got fireys in there, you've got conservationists. Is there a meeting and a, a, the fireys are saying, look, we really want to tackle this part of this national park and conservationists say, we'd like to keep that pristine and they argue that out? How, how does that work? Yeah, that's probably a fair description. I mean, you know, people bring all of their knowledge to the table and they work out how we can keep the fuel loads down mm. but protect some of those very important areas. For the ACT, the national park is also our water supply. We've got these, what are called sphagnum bogs up there, like a natural filter that keeps our water some of the best in the country. We need to make sure they're not burnt. Right. That also means making sure that bushfires can't go through them. So the areas around them can be burnt, but it needs to be a line there. Yeah, so there's that nuance, I suppose, okay. that we're not seeing in the public. So if state. someone's watching now, they're going, well, hang on, I know Greens like conservation. You're the minister in charge of this meeting, and fireys are saying, burn this, and conservationists are saying no. Were you taking the side of no quite often? Were you trying to avoid burns happening? Well, through the conversations, we've actually managed to build a consensus. And what I know is that both the conservationists and the fireys are happy Right. with our strategic bushfire management plan. They feel it strikes the right balance and you know, that process of building consensus, working together, has got us the right outcomes. Fireys might be sitting there going, well, I know that this Greens bloke's in charge. I won't push back too much, though. Oh, no, I don't think that's been the situation. Well, they're pretty upfront. You know, there's not too many climate sceptics on the end of a fire hose. Mm. They know that we have got serious bushfire threat being driven by hotter, drier conditions. The conservationists know that as well. And so it, everyone, I think, is working to the same agenda. There's a climate policy released recently that has an aim to plant more trees around the mm -hmm. ACT. Uh, could that make some areas more susceptible to fires? No, that plan is very clear that uh, there are certain areas we don't plant in the, in the bushfire abatement zones, they're called, which are on the edge of the suburbs. The species selection is very important as well. Mm. Some trees are less flammable, they go into those riskier areas. So you'd avoid oil trees, eucalypts for example? In certain places, yes, and we get very clear scientific advice on that. Mm. What, how would you sum up your view on hazard reduction? I mean, would you say that you might be more careful than perhaps an LNP government around conservation, whether it be species or, or habitat? Well, I don't think this is about politics, this is about science. It's about working with our fireys to make sure we protect our communities mm. and we protect our environment. We know that climate change is going to threaten the viability of some of these ecosystems. We need to be planning for the future. There's a lot of angst about what people can do on their properties as well, in an individual sense, limited by what they can cut down. Uh, we've had people calling in, emailing, talking about trees that you can't cut down in your yard for example. Is that possibly an issue out there? It's certainly not such an issue in the ACT because we're very much an urban environment with the bushland around us, so that's not been an issue in the way it perhaps is in other jurisdictions. What do you mean by that? Why would it not be an issue? If you're, if you're in an urban environment and there are trees near your property and the bushfire can come up pretty sure. close, that is an issue. Oh, I mean more in terms of those bigger debates we see about land clearing in other jurisdictions I think are not 
issues here right. in the ACT. We certainly have tree protection laws here in the Territory. You know, we, we need to increase the number of trees in this city because Canberra is forecast to become hotter. We've just had our hottest day ever at 44 degrees Celsius. Mm. Those trees are going to help us keep this city cool in the future. But do you have to be careful about which ones? I'll give you one case highlighted by Nikki Sava, who wrote in The Australian about three tall pine trees. She tried for years to get permission to cut them down. They were just inside her property. She was told they were heritage listed. Her house burnt down in 2005 after those pine trees caught fire. Do, does that sort of example give you pause about you know, which trees are heritage listed as an example? Oh, there's always careful consideration to be made. I, I presume that's in Canberra that she's doing. Yes. I mean, that, that firestorm in Canberra in 2003 was out of control. You know, it was a firestorm like nobody had ever seen. Well, this so was one that she detailed started in the brickworks next door, so a sort of oh, localised okay. incident. But this, this is the issue. This is what people are, are saying to us, and I, I accept that it's anecdotal, but that there might be... When they're told there's a heritage-listed tree on their property that burns their house down, they think, well, what was the point of that? Why are we putting priority to heritage-listed trees on properties like that? Sure, because in an area, I presume, therefore, if that's somewhere like Yarralumla, that really is in the middle of the city and is generally not considered to be at a bushfire risk. Mm. There's clearly been some sort of exceptional event there that I think probably has defied most people's expectations. Right. But if, that, if this is defying expectations now, when we're talking about a new normal, maybe we need to rethink heritage listing of trees, if they're on these sort of borders, if we've got a heightened fire risk? Yeah, these extraordinary events we've seen in the last couple of weeks are going to force a lot of rethinking. Hopefully they're going to force some rethinking in our federal government as well. Uh, we're all going to have to think about these things carefully. But what we also don't need is, I think, those extreme views that are saying we've just got to cut everything down and burn everything. That is certainly not a great outcome for our country either. But you'd be open to... We're going to see a Royal Commission, it looks like, um, and obviously I know the Greens are pushing for more action on, on climate change, but the other aspects being do we need to relook at heritage listing trees, uh, you know, when we decide to conserve the environment versus when we burn all conversations that haven't again well, uh, by what you're told. They will be challenging conversations. We've done it here in the ACT and I think we've got a great model. If there is a Royal Commission, we'll certainly be submitting the work we've been able to do uh, through our strategic bushfire management plan and show that you can get agreement between the firefighters the conservationists, traditional custodians. I think we've got a lot of learning to do on cultural mm. burning and traditional burning. I think there's some opportunities there. So there's a lot of new things to think about. Just finally, are you fearing a bit for the city? It's very livable Canberra, always great air quality. It's been awful for weeks and weeks. Does that mm. give you pause for thought about the sort of future of the bush capital, the way it's set up, given so many areas around us can burn? Yeah, what's happened in the last few weeks has been a real shock for this city. You know, we've never had smoke like this in all of the emergency scenario planning the ACT government has done, this scenario has never come up. No one has ever identified this as a risk to this city. Uh, so again, this is part of what does the new normal mean for us mm. and how do we need to prepare for it?